Hello, a good day to you all. We are here with you today to speak about an extremely important subject, what a man is always chasing, a man and woman, because they always want something new. They're tired of looking at themselves in that manner. So we're going to share with you the secret for you to be a new creature, a new man, a new woman. Very good day. May God bless you all. So, when we speak about a new man or a new woman, a new man in general is a new man, a new person. We are speaking about, we are dealing with the new birth. A new man is a new birth. And this new birth is not of the flesh. It's the new birth of the Holy Spirit. So when a person receives the baptism with the Holy Spirit, he is transformed into a new creature, a new person, a new man, a new woman. The old dies, disappears. So this is what happened in the days of Prophet Samuel. Samuel the prophet, he was sent to meet with Saul. Saul was searching for a lost sheep of his house. And after a couple of days, he got lost. And so prophet Samuel met with Saul. From God's commandment, God commanded him, don't forget this, and God told him to take the oil and consecrate him as the first king of Israel. The first king of Israel was Saul. But when the prophet met with Saul and did what God told him to do, look what's written. After the prophet poured the oil on his head, he said to Saul, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them. He was referring to the other prophets. The other prophets. And be turned into another man, a new man. So here we understand that when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, He makes that person a new creature, a new person. And it's important for us to say this, Esther, that because of this transformation in a new being, a new creature, so then a person, a person has a completely contrary, a behavior completely contrary to what he had. The character changes completely. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord has possessed them, has taken part of their lives. This is God's proposal of the Holy Spirit. It's what Jesus gave us, gave us when we received Him, when we accepted Him as our Lord, when we put ourselves before Him as servants. So He gives us His Spirit in order for His Spirit to make us a new creature, to have another vision, other mindset, other desires, it's completely different, someone completely different, a new heart, a new mind. But what has happened, Esther? What has happened usually is 
people have received a deceitful spirit, a deceitful spirit, the spirit of the devil, and Satan's spirit manifests himself in these people speaking in tongues, prophesying, fortune telling, revealing things which have nothing to do with God. And they think, oh, I prophesy, I speak in tongues, I have revelations, I cast out demons. So I have the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God who is with me. He continues being the same person, having the same desires, the same behavior. So he deceives himself. The objective of the Holy Spirit when he possesses us is to make us a new creature. For example, Esther, before I received the Holy Spirit, I was a very moody person. I had a low temper. I was very proud. I was truly proud. So after I received the Holy Spirit, I became the very opposite of what I was then. I remember I was over a year without talking to my sister. I was upset with her and I ceased speaking to her. This was before receiving the Holy Spirit. When I received the Holy Spirit, I was transformed. And I was already in the church when I had grudges against I was in the church. So many people, unfortunately, unfortunately, we say this with much sadness, because what can we do? But many people, you know very well, you who come from a traditional church, you know this. You know that many people who call themselves prophets and fortune tellers, and they speak in tongues, they are apparently, for those who have no discernment in spirit, for these, she's a woman of God, he's a man of God, etc. But they're not. When the Holy Spirit comes, what characterizes the baptism with the Holy Spirit is, or better said, are, the fruits of that person's life. This is why he says, and be turned into another man, into another person. It must happen when you receive the Holy Spirit. You say, oh, Bishop, I was baptized, I speak in tongues, I received an immense joy, etc. But you notice you notice, you realize that you did not change. You are the same person. For example, you can't forgive and such things. This rude manner of yours, you're a pragmatic person. You are not, you have no balance. This is not of God. This is not of God. The Holy Spirit, He gives us equilibrium. The Holy Spirit, He makes us to have a character according to the Lord Jesus. And this person does not have something which he has to force. This miracle, the spirit of love which is given by the Holy Spirit, it's something natural, as if it were a tree bearing fruit. So it's natural for him to be joyful, to give the other cheek, to comprehend those who do not have what they have. So he is a person who's easy to deal with, not a complicated person who, who has no control, uncontrollable. He has self-control. 
over his flesh, over, over himself, that flesh which once he could not control. So he is now a new person, truly. His countenance is different, a new shine over his eyes, an immeasurable peace, unexpressible peace, a joy which is constant, although before tribulations, he carries that joy, that peace. We face problems daily, isn't it, Esther? Many things, many things happen to us. We don't speak, but we don't pull our hair out. But we know that the Holy Spirit gives us this peace, this control, dominion over our reactions, our carnal and emotional reactions we have tranquility because we trust in this God so even though before the challenges the hardships which we face daily all of us but we who received the Holy Spirit we have tranquility serenity he can even become angry a person may be angry a given moment before the circumstances but that anger goes like goes like the wind it passes and that's it but when one is not baptized with the holy spirit he is led by anger someone who's always moody he is always moody always criticizing judgmental and by the way it's not only impatient in the sense of being impatient with this and that but that person who, is, who judges criticizes he likes to criticize he looks with bad eyes he's always criticizing something always lamenting always complaining how can a person filled with the Holy Spirit live out of complaints, this doesn't match. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of peace, the spirit of assurance, of conviction. So when a person receives the Holy Spirit, he becomes by default, by obligation, a new person. Even if he wants to be the old person, he can't. Because the Holy Spirit, who is the divine nature, does not allow this person to remain the way he was. It doesn't match the feelings with the spirit with the emotions. These are completely different lives. So the spirit overtakes, he surpasses the will of the flesh. You see how the devil has deceived people. How the devil has deceived people. People are even sincere, they're even good people, but because they are infants and immature, because they don't use faith with intelligence, they end up getting involved with emotions which produce nothing but tears and cries but it doesn't change anything when the Holy Spirit comes he makes us to have assurance that he is with us we are secure he leaves us with no insecurity fears, doubts when the Holy Spirit comes, He casts away all doubts and fills us with faith, assurance, conviction. I say this because I know what I'm talking about because it happened to me. I was like this insecure, filled with problems, complexes, etc. But when I received the Holy Spirit, that was it, it was done. It was like whatever to the complexes and complexes of inferiority, whatever was defeat, weakness, it was like whatever for to that. Because now I was a man of God. And as the testimony of Mauricio, he said, a lion was born within me. And if you compare your life 
With what you read in the Word of God, you will see that it doesn't match because how can I be a low-tempered person if here it mentions that I have tranquility, I have peace? How can I be live always irritated? This is not the same spirit that's being mentioned here. So if you compare what the Word of God says, you will see that something is wrong with you. Of course, definitely, because the Holy Spirit is the counselor. Is not what Jesus said? <laughs> and the counselor, the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, when He comes, we are strengthened in such a way that it's brutal. And by no means, by no means, because we speak in tongues doesn't mean that we have the Holy Spirit. If one prophesies, he has the Holy Spirit. No, not necessarily. I prophesy every time I preach the word of God. I'm a prophet. Every time I announce the word of God, I preach the word of God, I'm prophesying. That's not divination. It's the word of God. It's not my word. No one can accuse me and say, Oh, you, you are benefiting yourself. No, by no means. I preach the word and those who have a sound mind, those who use faith with intelligence, these understand well what we want for them. So, you see the testimony of the ex-pastor. She was a woman who would pray sing hymns, she would cry, but she did not live any of that which she preached. The fruits of her life were filthy. Now it changed. When a person changes in the interior, which is what the Holy Spirit does, the Holy Spirit changes us through our inside, and our inside, He makes us a new person, a new mind, a new heart, a new mind, a new vision, a new way of speaking. And this is an exclusive action of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is Jesus inside of us. It is God Himself in us. And it makes a difference. So, for example, you who watch me this moment, you are that person who goes to the nightclubs to indulge to suffocate your depression. You drink to forget. You consume drugs to forget. In summary, you don't want to be what you are because what you are, you are hell itself. So what you are is hell. So for a while to forget that problem, you make use of all sorts of you know, distractions, things of this world in order to to calm that pain, to soothe that, that pain. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, that's it. I doubt a person who has the Holy Spirit goes to nightclubs. He doesn't need to go to nightclubs. I doubt that a person who has the Holy Spirit will fill himself with alcohol. I doubt a person who has the Holy Spirit will be consuming drugs because he's consumed. He doesn't want to die. No, why would he want to die? For what? Sad and angry. Oh, my friends, the Holy Spirit is the solution for your life. But what do I do to receive him? There's only one thing. There's only one way. What do you have in life? What do you have that's yours, that's personal? It's yours, individual. What do you have? What do you have that's individual? Oh, I have a house, I have a car. That's not yours, it's lent to you. Everything is lent to us. What you have in the bank is lent to us, to you. You only have one thing that God does not have, that God's not the owner of, that's your soul. You haven't given up the soul. You haven't surrendered the soul. You haven't placed the soul on the altar. So then, 
você fica separado de Deus porque you become separated from God because he can only enter you when he receives your all which is your soul listen to this um pensamento, um it cannot just be a mind um todo, or a bit of it. It has to be oh, um all your jeito. life. There's no way. Não tem jeito. There's no way. Ou você Either abre mão you que você tem de mais give up what you have, rico, the most precious, the wealthiest thing you have, which is your soul, and you place it on the altar em forma de presente, in the form of presents, presents, of gifts, of offerings. E se você não tem nada and if you have nothing too good, put it there either way. And it's the most expensive Expensive thing in the world, it's the soul. Everybody is compared to the value of his soul. So as Jesus said, what profit is it? What does a profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Which means when one does not surrender his life to Jesus, his soul to Jesus, so then he loses it. He loses his soul. So, my friends, Jesus, na cruz, when Jesus died atenção, on the cross, pay attention. Ele he os seus pecados, carried pecados your mal, sins, my sins, our ele sins. He carried adultery, fornication. He carried drogas, bebidas, drugs, vícios, lies, engano. deceit, ele, addictions. Ele he carried estava. every worthless thing. Everything which was filthy within us, he carried it. He concentrated it upon his body. And still, you still resist surrendering your life to take up the cup of salvation. Only a foolish would do so. Of course, because Jesus carried upon his body all the sins fornication, pedophilia, all deaths and assassinations, lies, deceit, everything you can think which is no, which is evil, cruel, sinful, perverse, Jesus carried it upon him. However, because of this, he has the right to your soul. He has the right to receive your soul in order to save it. But if you don't surrender, the grace of Jesus will not be sufficient. There'll be, there'll be no grace for you because you don't want to surrender. Think carefully. Use your reasoning. Rationalize. And you'll understand that we cannot play with God. Either you are of God or you're not of God. And when a person takes time to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's because he takes time to surrender his soul to Jesus. When he surrenders immediately, immediately he receives the Holy Spirit. It's a give and take. That's what happens. And at times a person is so proud, so proud that he doesn't want to admit Oh, I don't want to admit that I'm from another denomination. I'm not. I'm from another church. I'm from another. De it doesn't matter. You are suffering. You're unhappy. You're living in misery. You're living a disgraceful life. Your life is worthless, worthless, so much so that you don't even like to look yourself in the mirror. You want to kill yourself. And how can it be that still? You want to consolidate, or you want to consider, oh, I'm from religion, such and such, a church, such and such. Religion doesn't save, nor does denomination save. What saves is the Lord Jesus. And for you to, for Him to save you, you need to give Him, to offer to Him your soul. If this is not possible, my friends, then it's best you switch to another channel will be able to do nothing for you. Very well, my friends, tomorrow we will have the Lord's Supper, but the Lord's Supper is not to be participated incorrectly, irregularly. 
You live in sin, but at the same time you participate of the Lord's Supper. Don't do that. Don't do that because you shall be jeopardizing yourself. The Lord's Supper is communion, agreement which you have, which you make. It's your confession of faith. Oh Lord, just as you took up this cup to save me, it was suffering, pain, death to save me, I also take up this cup to offer my life in sacrifice and favor, in, in favor of your work, of this faith which you have given us, and in favor of my own salvation. So you will participate of the Lord's Supper with the conscience that you will be making a pact with them, a pact. You will agree your will with his will. You will agree with him. You made your sacrifice for me. So I will also make my sacrifice for you. And this is the faith of the universal church of the kingdom of God. For us, it's not just about the grace of God. Because the grace of God only works when it is accompanied by faith in God. Faith in his word. If it were just a grace, so then everyone would be saved. Everyone would already be saved. And we know, you know, that it's not like that. So tomorrow, we will be taking the, the, the cup of salvation in the morning, afternoon, and later on. 